So sometimes you want to be able to show multiple data paths within one graph. So we may want to see aggression, self-injury, and disruption within one graph. To do this, you'd want to select your data for all of these columns, B, C, and D. So we'll go ahead and select this data. I'm going to go ahead and pull it down all the way to 20 because, again, this is going to give us the next 17 data points for each behavior in our graph. Line, marked line, and we've got one right here. The first thing I do is select those lines that go across, delete, and then we have three data paths sourced out. Again, we're going to do the same thing in terms of sourcing that um, x-axis. So if you click on any of these data paths and go up to source data, you can see they're labeled series one, two, and three, even though they do have the data paths in there. So if we look at this, series one is being sourced from column B, so we know that series one is our aggression equals quotations. Series two is column C, which is SIB. Series three is disruption. So now the they will be labeled on our graph down here, aggression, SIB, and disruption. We want to go ahead and source um, what the dates are for each of these. If we start with aggression, remember we can copy those values and place them here and change it to the first column, which is column A, because that's what our dates are. This will probably stay there for all three of these. So we only did it for aggression, but when I click on SIB, you can see we still have the same x-axis label and the same for disruption. So that's awesome. We don't have to do that for each one. Hit OK. And then we can see these data series with our dates and our frequency. I'm not going to label these axes. What I really want to work on is formatting um, each data path to look like how you want it to look. Um, it's a personal preference. I tend to stick with one color. I usually tend to use um, black because a lot of these graphs are going to be in progress reports that are printed out. It's just easier to see. Um, and then each data path, I may use a different symbol. So let's start with this first one. We'll just click on the red data path. And we want to format. So we're actually going to go up to Format here, Format Data Series. The other thing you can do is Control, Command, right click all the way down to format data series. And here are our options. I don't look so much at option, options, axis, or order, error bars. What I want to look at is our actual marker. So this is the marker fill. This is going to be what's inside here. I'm going to go ahead and change that to black. The line that surrounds that, black. The marker style, this is whatever shape you want your marker to be. I'm going to go ahead and I'm also, as you put more data points on this graph, this is only showing a month's worth of data, but as they start to get closer and closer together, some of your data points will start to overlap with each other. So I try to make the actual marker a little bit smaller, like a size five. Then we'll go down to line. We'll also make that black. And then I go into the weight of the line. Right now it's at 375. You can scroll down. I usually put it at one against a personal preference, but this is so once I start getting a lot of data in that graph, it's all showing up and I can clearly see each data point. And that's all I mess with. And I'm going to hit OK. I'm going to take my next series, which is aggression, and I'm just going to make it black as well and change the marker to a square. size, go to line, 
also black, change the weight to 1. Same with disruption. Marker fill, line, style, it's going to be a triangle, line. That's just a much cleaner graph for me to look at and especially to print out for anyone else to look at. You may not always want to source all of your behavior data within one graph. You may want to look at these separately, but there are times where you are going to want to compare across um, different behaviors or different conditions. Um, sourcing multiple data paths, data series are quite common with the functional analysis. So if each of these data paths represented a specific condition of the FA, attention, tangible escape, then you would be able to look at higher rates of behavior in a specific condition in order to identify the function of the behavior. So that's where you would see it uh, most often.